On today's story session, a delightful old tale about blackmail, kidnapping, and decapitation. This is Hurly Burly Butts. My name is Zach Stewart, and these are the Shadow Bear Story Sessions. Welcome to the Shadow Bear Story Sessions, the podcast about how brutally dark and totally insane folk tales and fairy tales used to be. Which, in my opinion, just made them way better. So we're going through the original versions of Grimm's Fairy Tales, story by story. We'll figure out the intended lessons and the actual lessons of each story. And afterwards, I'll adapt the tale into a movie or TV show. So let's get right to it with today's tale, titled Hurly Burly Butts. Gotta be one of my favorite titles of any folktale thus far. We begin. Once a king got lost during a hunt, and suddenly a little white dwarf appeared before him. Oh, you already know this story is gonna be a fucking banger. We've got little white dwarves popping up out of nowhere in the first sentence. Your majesty, he said, if you give me your youngest daughter, I'll show you how to get out of the forest. The king consented out of fear. Ugh, come on, buddy. And the dwarf helped him find his way. Well, maybe take a minute to think if you really need this help, king. Just get your bearings. Figure it out. Which direction did you come from? It's not like this king was in any immediate danger or anything. He's not giving up his daughter to save his life. He probably would have been fine. Jeez, this king gets lost and immediately becomes... A helpless baby. And here we've immediately got yet another terrible folktale father. Just just so ready and willing to sell out or straight up give away their daughters. Just, come on, try to bargain the guy down. Don't immediately be like, fine, I'll give you my whole family. Just, just be like, I'll give you a great hunting dog. How's that sound? A nice furry little buddy for you. You're, you're still coming out of this deal really well. Or how about ten years of delicious food? All you're doing is showing me how to get out of the forest... So pretty much anything you receive makes you a winner of this deal. (laughs) We continue. As he took leave of the king, he cried out, I'll be coming to fetch my bride in a week. When the king reached home, he was sad about his promise because his youngest daughter was his favorite. Well, yeah, if you'd thought about it for two seconds, maybe you could have avoided this situation. Or just not panicked. Or just take some accountability. Man, you got lost, then you get yourself out of it. Or suffer the consequences. Your daughter has to suffer because you got lost in the forest? Fuck off, king. It's just a a selfish prick. We continue. (laughs) His daughters noticed how sad he was and wanted to know what the cause of his worry was. Finally, he had to tell them that he had promised the youngest of them to a little white dwarf in the forest, and that the dwarf would be coming to fetch her in a week. Yeah, that sounds bad, when when you say it straight out like that. However, they told him to cheer up, for they would lead the dwarf on a wild goose chase. Damn, okay, these daughters are impressive. They are totally unfazed by this news. (laughs) They're just like, don't worry about it, we got this. Kind of makes you think maybe they're used to their dad being a whiny little helpless baby and them having to clean up his messes. Because they're not not missing a beat here. They don't even seem surprised. They clearly expect this from the king. Hell, maybe they should be in charge here. However, I do wonder why don't they just be like, if he shows up to take the daughter, let's just throw him in prison or kill him. Or be like, hey, that is a super exploitative deal which is not cool, dwarf. You took advantage of me when you were in a position of power. Now I'm going to take advantage of you now that I'm back in my kingdom and in a position of power. So take this horse and wagon full of supplies and food and never come back. Or I'll cut your head off. He's a king. Do what you want to do. The deal the dwarf made is so exploitative and manipulative that I wouldn't even fault the king for not honoring it. Come on. You should not get a child in exchange for directions. Pretty messed up. We... Continue. When the day came for the dwarf's arrival, they dressed a cowherd's daughter in their clothes and sat her down in their room. If someone comes to fetch you, you're to go with him, they ordered, and they themselves left the house. Hmm. 
Okay, well, this is a pretty shitty move, daughters. <laughs> They're just forcing a poor cowherd's daughter to go off with this dwarf instead of one of them. That's not solving the problem, it's just sacrificing a helpless bystander in their place. It's not even very clever, either. It's not a great start. Not a great start, ladies. It's basically the same deal the king made. It's just giving up someone else instead of yourself. I mean, for all they know, the dwarf could kill this poor girl. They don't know what's going to happen. They're just pulling more innocent people into this situation. No sooner had they left than a fox entered the castle and said to the maiden, Sit down on my furry tail, hurly-burly butts. Off to the forest. So the fox is referring to this poor maiden as Hurly Burly Butts. It's like using it as a name. All right, it's pretty weird and also just generally insulting to not even ask someone's name and just call them a nonsense word that ends in butts. We continue. <laughs> the maiden sat down on the fox's tail and he carried her out into the forest. When they came to a beautiful clearing where the sun was shining very bright and warm, the fox said, get off and take the lice out of my hair. Alright, that's pretty gross. Maybe this filthy, disgusting fox should have asked her to do this before she got on his tail, because now she's probably got lice in her own clothes and hair. So, screw you, you dirty fox. And maybe just be a little nicer about it? You're asking her to do you a favor. Don't be a dick. It seems like the plan is for him to live with this woman that he kidnapped, right? So, not making a great first impression, fox. I'm also now realizing that women are getting kidnapped all the damn time in these old stories. Not going to comment on that at this juncture, but it's a horrifying look into the past if people just getting kidnapped is such a common story element that it's not even really treated like a huge deal. It's just pretty standard, it seems like. It's like, oh, they're going to kidnap me? No, we'll just sacrifice this person. And then they kidnap her. Normal, normal day. We continue. The maiden followed his orders, and the fox laid his head on her lap so she could louse him. While she was doing this, the maiden said, When I was in the forest yesterday about this time, it was more beautiful. What were you doing in the forest? the fox asked. Oh, I was tending the cows with my father. So you're not the princess. Sit down on my furry tail, hurly-burly butts. Back to the castle. Alright, so clearly the sisters didn't tell this girl to play along and pretend to be a princess or anything. How did they think this plan was going to work? Are they just buying time to come up with something better? Let's find out. The fox carried her back and said to the king, You've deceived me. That was a cowherd's daughter. I'll come again in a week and fetch your daughter. Alright, well why is he waiting another week? He's there now. Just take the daughter. Don't make yourself do a whole other trip to the castle next week. He's just giving them more time to do some more tricksy bullshit. At the end of the week, the princesses dressed a goose herd's daughter in splendid garments, sat her down, and went away. Then the fox came again and said, Sit down on my furry tail, hurly burly butts, off to the forest. Alright, here we go again. I mean, if the fox is going to give him a whole week, they could keep this going forever. Presumably. A problem with this, from the fox's perspective, is there doesn't seem to be any threat or negative consequence if the king just doesn't give up his daughter. He's not making any threats about, like, what'll happen. What power does this fox have? As far as we know, he's just a fox. Who's, like, an agent of the dwarf, or the dwarf himself, who, if he can shapeshift or fucking something. It shouldn't be that hard of a situation to deal with just a fox, Right? You wouldn't think. We continue. When they arrived at a sunny spot in the forest, the fox said once more, Get off and take the lice out of my hair. What is this bullshit with the lice all about? What does that have to do with anything? Why is this part of it? And where's the dwarf? Is the fox his minion? Or has the dwarf transformed into a fox? Who knows? We continue. As the maiden was lousing the fox, she sighed and said... I wonder where my geese are now. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty obvious giveaway, lady. These princesses should be doing a better job of briefing these girls on what they're supposed to do. This is a super half-baked plan all around. So they should have been like, play along. Say you're a princess, 
If you fail and he finds out, we'll kill you or something. I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't have been noble of them to do that, but obviously they're not being particularly noble as it is. <laughs> Offering up these poor, innocent women to this fox who we don't know what he's going to do to them or what he's capable of. Not super cool. We continue. The fox replied, What do you know about geese? Rude. Oh, I take them to the meadow every day with my father. So you're not the king's daughter. Sit down on my furry tail, hurly burly butts. Back to the castle. The fox carried her back and said to the king, You've deceived me again. That was a goose herd's daughter. I'm going to come again in a week, and if you don't give me your daughter, you'll be in for trouble. All right, that's a super vague thread. We haven't seen the dwarf or fox do anything that would indicate they're dangerous in any way. Just keep going. Just keep going with the plan. Or just kill the fox next time it shows up. Why aren't they trying that? This is a king. You'd think they'd be pretty ruthless. The king became frightened, and when the fox returned, he gave him the princess. <laughs> Come on, come on, king, grow a pair. This king is a sniveling coward. The second he feels any inkling of fear or threat, he just does whatever is asked of him. Fuck this king. If a nearby kingdom threatened him, he just roll over and give up whatever they asked for. Let the princesses handle the kingdom. Actually, in fairness, their plan wasn't great either. It hasn't been going super well. I don't know what the endgame was or what phase two could have possibly been of this give them other people's daughters plan. At this point, they haven't solved anything. They've just endangered two innocent girls to buy a couple weeks of time, but didn't use that time to come up with a better plan or any ideas that could actually solve this problem instead of just making it take longer and pissing off the fox so that now his guard is up and he doesn't trust him. Uh, come on, both the king and his daughters are terrible at this, but at least the princesses have some guts. I don't know, we continue. So the fox showed up and said, sit down on my furry tail, hurly burly butts, off to the forest. She had to ride on the fox's tail, and when they got to a sunny place, he said to her, get off and take the lice out of my hair. Why are there so many lice in this fox's hair? He's had two sessions of someone picking them out, but he still needs more? This fox is disgusting. However, when he laid his head in her lap, the princess began to cry and said, I'm a king's daughter, and yet I must louse a fox. If I were sitting at home now, I'd be looking at the flowers in my garden. Hmm. All right, maybe these princesses aren't the strong leaders I thought they were. <laughs> this girl is having a meltdown about picking lice, while the cowherd and gooseherd's daughters were pretty much totally cool about it. And then as they happily picked the lice, they were just like, the weather is not quite as nice today. I don't. Maybe this is a ploy. I don't know. Maybe I'm too quick to lose faith in these daughters. Come on, youngest daughter. Do something clever. All right. Then the fox knew that he had the right bride and turned himself into the little white dwarf. Okay. He was now her husband. Ooh, that happened fast. And she had to live with him in a little hut and cook and sew for him. So that's it? She just instantly becomes his wife? I mean, why would this be the one he wants for a wife? Anyway, it says she cooks and sews for him. Cowherd's daughter and the gooser's daughter... We're totally cool about lousing the fox and didn't even seem particularly bothered that they were being kidnapped. <laughs> they seem like they'd be much happier, much nicer to be around, and also probably better at housework. But he asked this girl to louse the fox and she starts crying and saying, This is gross. My house is better. And the dwarf is like, Yep, she's the gal for me. We'll be happy together forever. Mm -mm. Bad plan. Bad plan, dwarf. This lasted a good long time, and the dwarf did everything he could to please her. Yeah, if we're being honest, depending on how happy the cowherd and gooseherd's daughters were with their lives previously, with the cow and the geese, this might have been an improvement for them. They might actually be very happy with this white dwarf. I mean, if they were poor and miserable before, then living with a dwarf who treats you amazingly is actually a pretty big upgrade. And we don't know what the dwarf is like. Maybe he's super cool. He's clearly a bit of a rebel, right? 
Now he's super nice to her and taking care of her. Sounds like a pretty cool guy, to be honest. I mean, the kidnapping notwithstanding. But the spoiled daughter of a king who already had anything she could possibly want definitely isn't going to like this. And you know what? She's right to, to be honest. But for that reason, I kind of wish this dwarf was being nice and helping improve the life of one of the other girls now. I mean, this spoiled daughter doesn't want your shit. Just get yourself a wife who appreciates you, dwarf. Have some self-respect. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. We continue. <laughs> One day, the dwarf said to her, I've got to go away, but three white doves will soon come flying here. When they swoop down to the ground, catch the middle one. Once you've got it, cut its head off right away. But pay attention and make sure you've got the middle dove, or else there'll be a disaster. What the hell, dwarf? Maybe you should stay and handle this yourself, if the stakes are so high? I mean, this girl was squeamish about picking lice out of a fox's hair. Now you want her to catch a bird with her bare hands and cut its fucking head off? I mean, it can't be easy to snatch a flying bird right out of the air, right? How the hell is this girl actually going to accomplish this? The dwarf departed, and it didn't take long for the three white doves to come flying toward her. The princess paid close attention and grabbed the middle one. All right, so she's clearly got quick reflexes and incredible hand-eye coordination. Way to go. Then she took a knife and cut off its head. No sooner was the dove lying on the ground, oh, that's sad, than a handsome prince stood before her and said, A fairy cast a spell over me, causing me to lose my human form for seven years. Then I was to fly by my wife as a dove between two other doves, and she would have to catch me and cut off my head. If she didn't catch me, or if she caught another and I flew by, then everything would be lost, and I would never be saved. That's why I asked you to pay attention, for I'm the White Dwarf, and you're my wife. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. You didn't need to hammer that home at the end there, Dwarf. The princess was delighted, and together they went to her father. When he died... They inherited the kingdom. The end. What the fuck? So the dwarf was actually a prince, and he had to do this white dove fly aerial flying routine, like a military flyover. Why'd she have to cut its head off? Why couldn't she just catch it, and then it transforms into the hot prince? Why does it have to be so gruesome that she has to decapitate a bird with a knife? Which is some brutal shit to have to do to a poor bird. I mean, come on. And it says the princess was delighted after the dwarf turned into a prince. But if she wasn't happy with it before, and they didn't get along when he was the dwarf, they're not going to get along now. He's still the same guy. It's just now he's a handsome prince instead of a dwarf. He's the same person underneath. So I'll be superficial here. Guys, and why would they inherit the kingdom after the king's death? This guy is still blackmailed the king and kidnapped his daughter, even if temporarily. I mean, sure, they came back, but he still caused a lot of stress and hardship and suffering for the king and the king's other daughters, who thought they'd lost their sister forever. I mean, why couldn't the dwarf have just been direct and upfront about the situation? Just be like, look, I'm a prince, but I'm cursed. If I marry one of your daughters and we do this thing where she somehow catches a dove out of thin air and viciously cuts its head off, then I'll be fine. And our kingdoms can unite, which is great. Why not just say that? He didn't say anything about having to keep the curse secret. I mean, he could have been direct with the princess, too, at least. Probably would have made her feel better to be like, hey, look, we gotta live in the forest, but I'm gonna do this cool dove stuff, and then we can go back, you can go back home, it'll be fine. Also, I still don't understand the whole switcheroo deal with the cowherd and the gooseherd's daughters. Why was that part of this story? Why was that necessary? It served no purpose. <laughs> why, why did it have to specifically be the princess who cuts the bird's head off? He just said, quote, I was to fly by my wife as a dove. It could be any lady. And the cowherd and gooseherd's daughters seemed pretty cool, if we're being honest, they probably would have had more useful skills to live out in the woods with him than the princess did. That's another thing, though. It says they lived together in the woods for a good long time. 
Why? He didn't, he didn't need to win her over and have her love him back or anything. That's never said. He just needed her to be his wife, and that happened immediately after he determined she was the princess. It just happened automatically. It didn't even seem like there was a ceremony or anything. And I like how he determined that by the fact that she was complaining about picking lice out of a fox's fur, that that meant she was the princess. That was his test. Like, oh, she's not happy about being forced to pick lice out of a wild animal's fur. She must be a spoiled, stuck-up princess, because everyone else would be super cool about it. But you know what? That's a point in favor of everyone else, because everyone else was super cool about it. <laughs> Actually, maybe the fact that he was a prince is why he insisted on marrying the princess and refused to be with a cowherd and goosehead's daughters, which is stuck up of him. He's like, well, I'm a cursed dwarf who's poor and lives in the forest, but underneath all that, I'm still a prince, so I'm not going to marry some commoner. I'm going to maintain ridiculously high standards for whoever I'm going to marry and will only be with royalty who I deem worthy of me. <laughs> Actually, sounds sounds like how a lot of people out there think of themselves, to be honest. Everyone thinks they're, they're a prince or princess. You hear people all the time being like, I deserve the best. Meanwhile, it's like, have you met you? Because you kind of suck. And you know what? We all kind of suck in our own sucky ways. Nobody's perfect. Gooserd's daughter seemed way cooler than the princess. <laughs> Fuck anyone who thinks they're a prince or princess. Just find yourself a cool as hell gooserd out in these streets. You'll be way happier. And if you find the right person, then it doesn't matter who they are or what they do. They'll seem like a prince or a princess to you. That's going to be the actual lesson that I'm going to take from this one. And I also looked up the word hurly-burly butts to see if it actually means anything. And the best I could find was a description related to this story that broke the word into three parts. Hurl means to dash or move violently. You know, like hurling a, a rock or whatever. Burl means to pick knots or loose threads from cloth. You know, like picking a lice. And bus means a vessel of burden, or a kiss, or a smack. So, if you combine all those elements, it kind of makes sense, with a little zhuzhing around the edges. It's still a nonsense word, combining all of those concepts that the fox uses to refer to the women he's trying to kidnap. So, they're taking some liberties with the language here, but personally, I'm all for it. Also, it ends with the word butts, so... I'm all for that too. Keep doing you, Fox, you little weirdo. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out another really random and pretty fucked up theme too. This is now at least the second time that we've had a story where someone had to cut an animal's head off, and then something magic and great would happen. Why does it ever have to come to that? I mean, I get that it could be like a comment on rebirth or something, but. It is super brutal and bloody and extreme, guys. <laughs> and what, what if what if they do it wrong or something? There's no second chance here with decapitation. Or what if the curse is a lie and then they're just dead? If you were a kid in the Black Forest hundreds of years ago when these all these stories were going around, you'd be like, man, some of these animals out in these forests must be princes and princesses who've been cursed, right? I mean, there's, there's all these stories about it. I should just start catching animals and cutting their heads off. It's only a matter of time before one of them turns out to be a magic prince or princess, and then I'll live happily ever after. Well, time to get to decapitating. Man, all right. So that, that kind of relates to another theme I'm noticing in these old folk tales of people making really unreasonable and exploitative deals and promises. I mean, were people just getting totally screwed over because of bad deals back then? That's, that's kind of happening a lot still, I guess. So maybe these stories about not agreeing to deals without thinking them through are pretty necessary for people. But then again, this deal that's super manipulative and messed up ends up being a good thing in this instance. The dwarf kidnapping this child actually turns out to be a prince. I don't see how that translates to the real world in any way. It's never going to happen where you've got like $10,000 in credit card debt and the credit card company calls you and is like, guess what? You just murdered a bird, so all of your credit card debt is now a boat. Congratulations on your boat. 
No, not going to happen. So I don't know. Mixed messages. Mixed messages there. We could extrapolate that and say that a lesson of this story is that something that seems like a bad thing might actually turn out to be a good thing. I think that's that's a good lesson, but I don't think this story demonstrates it super well. Sometimes something bad happens to you, but it could be a blessing in disguise. That's usually dependent on your ability to roll with the punches and turn that bad thing into some good. But the princess and the king don't do anything. It just turns out that the guy who kidnapped the princess turned into a prince, which isn't even necessarily a good thing. He still kidnapped the princess and forced her to marry him. He might be a tyrant, for all we know. Maybe when he became king, which again feels undeserved because he married the youngest daughter by blackmailing the king. How does that lead to him becoming king? It's definitely not the guy who should inherit the throne. (laughs) But maybe he then went on to be an absolute monster of a king, and we have no reason to believe he'd be a good or benevolent ruler based on his actions. All he's done is blackmail, kidnap, and show disdain for humble, nice villagers. (laughs) He seems like an asshole. If you ask me. So this one this is a messy one, folks. But in any event, let's adapt this thing. So this one's going to be a movie, an animated movie. We've got a community living on an island. And one day, a little girl takes a small canoe and goes out to sea. But the tide takes her, and she gets swept out and lost, lost at sea. And a dolphin circles her and then pops its head out of the water and is like, what are you doing all the way out here? And let's say, the, let's say the dolphin has the voice of Danny DeVito, because why not? And the little girl says that she's lost, and Danny DeVito the dolphin says, Well, I can get you back home. I know where you are, but you gotta give me something in return. A baby. I want a human baby to raise as my own. And the little girl is like, I don't, I don't think you can do that. You know, a baby would die if you took it underwater. And Dolphin DeVito is like, don't you worry about that. What I do with a baby is my business. You just get me that baby. Otherwise, you're going to die out here. So it doesn't seem like you've got much of a choice. And since she's a little girl, she panics and agrees. I feel like it's more believable that a little girl wouldn't think it through and would make this hasty deal out of fear as opposed to the fully grown adult king in the original story. (laughs) So... She agrees, and the dolphin pulls her back to shore and is like, I'm coming back for that baby in a week. And her family sees her, and they're so relieved, but she doesn't tell them about the whole baby thing. And she has a she has a baby brother, but of course she's like, I can't give up my brother. What am I going to do? And so she gets a bunch of clay and sculpts it into the shape of a baby. And she puts clothes on it, and Dolphin DeVito shows up a week later, and she gives him the clay baby, and he's like, cool baby, nice doing business with you. But the next day, he comes back and he's like, what the hell? That baby was made of clay. It dissolved within hours of me bringing it underwater. All of my dolphin friends laughed at me, and it was humiliating. I'm coming back in another week. Give me that baby! And he leaves. And so the girl puts together a few coconuts and carves them up and dresses it up in clothes. And meanwhile, there's this neighboring community who are starting starting trouble and trying to provoke a war with the girl's community. And the next week, the girl gives the coconut baby to Dolphin DeVito. But he comes back, and he's like, that that was a bunch of coconuts. Do you think I'm stupid? Why do you think I won't realize that you keep giving me things that aren't babies? I know what a baby is. I'm coming back in a week. Give me that baby. And over the coming week, the girl thinks deeply about giving the dolphin her baby brother. But meanwhile, the situation with the neighboring violent community is getting worse. And when the dolphin comes back, the girl says, I can't do it. I can't give you my brother, but I can offer myself in his place. It was me who got lost at sea, so it's me who should have to deal with the consequences. And Dolphin DeVito is like, well, it's not ideal, but I accept. And so she grabs onto a rope, and Dolphin DeVito pulls her underwater. And just when she thinks she can't hold her breath anymore... They pass through this this weird underwater magic bubble, and she can breathe underwater, and there's a whole underwater community of dolphins, and they're like, there's a great war at hand between us and this neighboring group of violent asshole dolphins. We wanted a baby so that you could raise the baby to know our ways and understand and not judge us for being dolphins and not humans, because, you know, we know that humans have often killed our kind and think of themselves as being better than us and above us. They're super pretentious, but if you agree to live in harmony and treat us with respect, then all will be well. 
We will do a magic ceremony to give you special underwater superpowers, and you will help us to defeat the evil dolphins. We needed a human because with your human hands you can make tools and contraptions that will help us defeat the evil dolphins. We, we can design these things in our heads because we're super smart dolphins, but we can't build them. You know, we just got these little little stupid flippers. It's not great for building stuff, you know? So then there's a long sequence, like a montage, where the dolphins are teaching her stuff, and she's doing cool underwater superpower training, and they do a magic ceremony, and she's like, I can breathe underwater anywhere now, not just in the magic bubble. Also, I can swim crazy fast and ride dolphins and throw electric eels like spears and all kinds of cool, crazy underwater shit. And she helps them build weird, cool dolphin machines. And then they fight the evil dolphins and win. And then the girl is like, my people have a problem with a violent neighboring community as well, just as you did with these evil dolphins. Can you please help my people as I have helped you? And the dolphins are like, yeah! And so the girl returns to her community and she looks all cool and with, you know, she's got like dolphin tattoos. I don't know. I don't know. Tattoos of cool dolphin stuff. She looks cool. And her family says, we were so worried. We thought you'd gotten lost again and perished at sea. And she's like, nope, I'm dolphin girl now. And shit is awesome. I have a solution to the problem of our violent neighbors. We got to lure them out to sea and then we'll have a battle at sea. And her people are like, what will we do then once we're at sea? And she's like, don't worry about it. It's going to be awesome. And they're like, all right, okay, I guess. And so they lure the, the violent evil people who keep attacking them out to sea. And then the dolphins charge in with Dolphin Girl riding atop Dolphin DeVito. And they massacre every last one of those terrible, violent, mean people. And they all live happily ever after. Except for the bad guys who were viciously murdered by dolphins. The end. And that will do it for this week's story session. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Come on back next week for a story titled The King with the Lion. Huh, sounds intense. Let's fucking go. My name is Zach Stewart, and these are the Shadow Bear Story Sessions. Thank you.